So after your trunk is clear, you'll want to start by removing your interior panels. You probably start with the battery tray covers. You just turn this knob and uh, pull it out and set it to the side. For the other interior side panels, they seem to be held on with these clips that look like this. And uh, when they're in, like that, I was able to just grab them with my fingers and pull them out like this and then remove them. So you're gonna to wanna to do that to the side here, back there, over there, and then there are two more up in that corner. And next you'll wanna grab the first tool. It is a T40, come on focus, T40, um, what is this, star? Something, not an Allen, but you know, T40. Focus. Trust me, it's a T40. And this is going to be used to remove that and that. Ready, go. And after unbolting those two side panels, and really you could have done this first, but next step is to go ahead and just remove this entire center piece here. So I'm gonna pull it out and just set it aside. Your trunk might be dirty like mine with leaves and stuff. Not a bad idea to go ahead and vacuum that out now if you want. This will also expose some of the other electronics in the car. So just be careful around those. And now one last thing before these side panels can be pulled out, you'll need to remove this black trim piece. And there are four more of these push pins here, 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 and here. And there may possibly be a screw or something there. We'll find out. It looks like we might need to pull up on the weather stripping a little bit on the outside here to release that pan piece. So there we go. And now you can see this piece just pulls up and out of the way. And this is what you're left with. Now none of this has been difficult so far, it's just a little time consuming. So from here we should be able to wiggle these pieces out. That kind of slides out of the uh, metal piece here, which I'm going to fold back in. And then there it is. One side out. So I put the... Um, seat down and yeah this one comes right out now and what we're going to want to do is now focus on the rear shock uh, covers those look like they just pull right off and you can see that there is a wire coming out of it that's definitely for EDC control and that runs back over there all right so let's go ahead and un take that cover off and see what it looks like okay now we're in the trunk and I'm gonna just, that was actually easy. Grab the bottom, oh, it comes right out, look at that. Um, and there's our EDC connector on the factory shock. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that. Hopefully, oh, well that was easy. I, I literally just pulled straight up. And there we go. Put the 10 millimeter on the top of there and then uh, turn it with the 22. It'll take a little bit of effort. It's not a lot of room in that area, but it'll work. Eventually, you'll get uh, to the top. And that's what you're left with. That was uh, a pain in the ass. Okay. Um, 
Now let's go ahead. Now let's go ahead and jack the car up. All right. Honestly, at this point, the uh, you can compress the shock down, and it'll come out of the uh, hole up there. But you're still gonna have to disconnect it from the nut at the bottom right there. So that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna go ahead and set this camera up back here. Okay, and since I don't have an 18 uh, socket, I've got an 18 wrench. So we're gonna try the we're gonna try this the fun way. Wish I had an 18 to use that impact. <clears throat> Might have to get creative if this doesn't work. There we go. Slowly. Now that I've got it kind of backing out, I'm just backing it off with a I backed it off with the 19 impact. And I can actually compress the shock by hand right there, pushing up. And that should give me enough space to pull down and get this thing out. Oh, just barely. Come on. There we go. Maybe. <laughs> it's always something, right? Okay, old shock is out. Okay, so we got the old shock out and we've got our new Bilstein. You can see uh, right away that the old shock has a EDC connector that goes onto the top of it. And the new Bilstein does too, but the cable is coming right out and there's another cable attachment uh, that will plug into this. So we actually need to transfer some parts from the old shock over to the new one. Or if we bought uh, new upper mounts, which is actually uh, an upper upper mount and a upper lower mount, we would use those. But I'm not going to. I'm going to reuse the old hardware and bushings and transfer it onto this. I would, but reason, um, I'm not going to go into details why. I'm just not for this demo. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is refer to the manual that shows what Bilstein piece you use and what OE piece we use. So to start, we're going to remove the nuts and add these pieces on as necessary. I guess what I'll start by doing is removing the top nut from the OE piece, which you will not reuse. So I'm gonna put that aside and I'm going to take off the two nuts that are included with the Bilstein shock. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take those off, carefully slide them over the connector, and put them in a spot where I'm not going to lose it. Then there's a washer. I'm also going to remove that. And now you have this uh, inner guide and a metal plate. So if I'm going to return to the instructions here, it has me um, <clears throat> removing the OE cap. So let me actually, let me actually uh, you know, hold this. We'll just hold it like this, right? Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to not use the OE cap, which is going to be, let me take this off one by one. I've got the upper, then I have the lower with the uh, boot, dust boot, I guess. So we've got dust boot, dust boot, dust boot. And then we've got the lower upper bushing that has the guide in it. We're not gonna use that guide. And then we have this cap, which <clears throat> here it says OE with a cross to it. We're not gonna use that. So this, the OE one has the cap that has the bump stop built into it. We're not gonna use any of that. What we are going to use is this guy here. Actually, let's look at that again. So we've got, okay, yeah, this guy 
the pin, which is going to be the Bilstein pin, your dust boot, which is going to be uh, the OE1, followed by the upper cap, and then the nuts that Bilstein has supplied. So what I can go ahead and do here is push this guide out of the original, because we're not going to use that. And uh, I think the reason is because you can compare, it's, it looks to be about the same height, but the um, inner diameter is actually different. So we want to use the Bilstein one. So I'm going to put this one aside. I'm going to put the lower, or you might have a new lower, and we're going to put that over top, and there it fits right on, just like this. You can see we've got the Bilstein uh, guide with the BMW OE lower part on top of it. And then we are going to put the dust boot. Now I actually do happen to have brand new dust boots. So I'm going to use a new dust boot over top of that and slide it on. And now we've got the guide pin um, in the middle. It's poking through a little bit. And then we're going to reuse the OE upper top, which is going to be this guy here. So we slide it through, set it on top, and there's our connection. However, we can't lower, raise this into the uh, shock tower this way. We're going to have to put this part on after we put the shock in the car. But when it's up and mounted, this part's going to go through the uh, bottom of the car into the shock tower. And then I'm going to go into the shock tower there and slip this over the connector and down. And then I will take the Bilstein supplied washer, put that on top. And then I will take the lock nuts. There's two of these. So I'm going to put one down, thread it on. And when you thread it, <clears throat> I want to be careful not to cross thread. But on the Bilstein shock, it has a cutout here where you can apply, I'm not sure what size this is in millimeters, but maybe it's a 10 mil. Uh, you can get a wrench on there to stop the, the actual uh, body from from spinning when you turn it and then uh, i haven't measured this one either but it looks like maybe it's a 17 millimeter I'm, I'm just guessing not actually sure right now to tighten that down so we'll get to that all right so i'm going to take this nut back off i'm going to take the upper pieces off and we'll set those aside <clears throat> and we'll put those on after we get the shock up and through so we'll go ahead and do that now the uh I'm definitely going to need to compress this to get it up and over. Let's try this. I'm down here, up through the hole, and that's in. I've just got to now compress this shock up enough so that I can turn it. Man, I'll tell you what, these, uh, these shocks are definitely more heavy duty than the ones that I'm pulling out. I'm gonna stop this and because I use two hands, I need to use two hands on this. Okay, and now we have the Bilstein EDC damper or Bilstein Damptronic shock in the shock tower. Uh, be careful when you're putting uh, in from the top, probably a good idea to have two hands, somebody reaching in through the top to grab the cable and then another person in, uh, in the wheel well here to slide it up. Um, we have it mounted. Like so, all we gotta do now is put the bolt through and then uh, go into the trunk and tighten up the upper nut. The bottom bolt, nothing to it really. Slide it in and uh, start threading. All right, I apologize for the unsteadiness of this bit, but now all I'm doing is taking the upper, feeding it through, and pushing it down, Taking the washer, feeding it through, pushing it down, seating it in there, followed by first nut, and we'll go ahead and start to thread that down. And I'm threading it by hand for right now. That way there's less to deal with with the tools afterward. And there we go, there's the uh, The nuts tightened and now we're going to take care of the cable attached to the other end 
and connect it to the harness. All right, so technically we're done with the install. All we have to do is connect the uh, Bilstein supplied wiring harness to the new harness, which I have here. However, I want to reuse <clears throat> the shock covers that are original. Problem is that this hole here just is a little bit too small for the new connector to pass through, uh, which you'll see right here pass throughs, passes through there and comes out the other side. So what we're going to do, uh, and I tried squeezing uh, the cable through there, but it's just a little bit too big. So what I'm going to do is take a bit and just try to see if we can't drill that hole out a little bit larger. That's the plan. We'll see how it goes. So you'll see what I've done is uh, just actually removed some material from the top of the cover right here. Uh, I used an X-Acto knife and a combination with a drill bit to kind of drill out the hole slightly and make it easier for the uh, the harness to come out this side. The problem was that, let's see if I can focus here. Uh, the problem was that this hole goes from a larger size to a smaller size on the outlet opening. So we just kind of cleaned it up. I mean, it's not the prettiest thing, but it should work. So let's try it. All right, and now you can see that we were able to get the harness through. Um, and we'll just mount the cap back on top of the hole, connect the uh, the harness to the other wire, which is dangling right there, and zip tie it all up. And then we'll go ahead and do the other side. And here's another shot of it for you guys, all buttoned up. You got the cable coming out, it goes over to the right, it is zip tied against the loom, and then runs along the top, and you can see where the two halves of the Bilstein supplied cable reconnect. I've got another zip tie and then it leads to the EDC harness um, connector, the original connector. So there it is. All right guys, so that's how the driver's side is going to look. The passenger side, once it's drilled out and you know, cable ran through, it'll look identical. Only thing to do next, uh, only thing left to do is to reinstall the covers on the trunk and uh, yeah, wrap it up. That's it. The rear shock install is pretty straightforward. Not too bad on the E92 M3. You could definitely do it in a small space. Next up, we're going to do the struts, so watch for that video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. <laughs> and see you guys later.